the app, you don't necessarily need an account to use the app, but it helps to use an account or create an account because you can print to this Wi-Fi printer from anywhere, anywhere uh, in the state, anywhere around the world. It will allow you to print to it. In this app, you can also manage uh, things like uh, the ink supply, and there are a whole bunch of other features that come with this app. And this app is also supported, uh, supports other HP printers if you have uh, another HP printer that is not this one. Now, one of the things that also intrigued me about uh, when I purchased this printer was that HP has what's called an instant ink subscription. And with this subscription, you can pick one out of five plans. You can print 15 pages for 99 cents a month. You can print up to 700 pages for roughly $25 a month. So if you go over your allotment, you pay a dollar and you get like a, a, another set of 10 pages. But to me, you're really not paying for the pages and I'll explain why in a second. Uh, when you have a subscription, for example, I have the $2.99 uh, per month subscription. If I don't use all of those pages, it just rolls over. So I never, they never expire. So I don't have to worry about them going away. And also when you uh, subscribe to this instant ink, the printer sends a notification online that you are low on ink and you are automatically shipped ink to your house. Now this is looking at the account online. Uh, you see the same thing in the app, but there's something here that I wanted to show you and it's easier to see uh, through the um, website. So if you look right here, you'll see that if you print a photo from your mobile phone or from your tablet, anything five by seven and smaller, you actually print for free. It does not count against your monthly subscription of pages. So why was that so intriguing to me? For example, if I have 500 photos that I want to print and I have actually like six or 7,000 photos and I'm sure most of you have a whole lot more. And I've decided that I want to disperse all of those photos to members of my family. So I very well may be printing 500 photos per person for the next few weeks. So if I have 500 photos to print and they're all five by seven or smaller, I can print and if my printer is running low on ink, it'll send a message and they will send me ink cartridges. And the only thing that I am paying for is my monthly subscription. So I will get as many ink cartridges as I need sent to me as long as I print these five by seven or smaller photos, but I'm still only paying my $3 per month subscription. And that is really um, helpful and intriguing and it keeps uh, printers out of the landfill because if you've priced printers in the last few years, you know that it's cheaper to buy a new printer then buy a printer cartridge. And over here on the left, you see the cost of the printer cartridges if you do not have the instant ink uh, subscription. Now the instant ink cartridges are actually different from the regular cartridges that go with this printer. Uh, the instant ink cartridges you know, talk to the account. The regular cartridges don't talk to the account. So if you end your subscription, the instant ink cartridges will not work. But on the left-hand side here, I have uh, listed the cost of the regular cartridges. So for a cartridge that will print 200 pages, it's roughly $20 a month. Oh, I'm sorry, not $20 a month, but $20 for the cartridge for the black cartridge. If you want the color cartridge, that's roughly $25 for 165 pages. So as you're printing and you run out of ink and you have to purchase your own cartridges, you can see how this can easily add up to hundreds of dollars. Whereas if you are on the instant ink subscription, you're only paying minimal 99 cents a month or $25 a month 
depending on how much you want to print. They also send you a recycle bag where you can uh, input all of your spent cartridges. And when that bag fills up, you send that back to HP. So for me, everything here was like a win-win and a bonus as far as not having to buy an additional printer. Uh, if I run out of cartridges, cartridges are automatically sent to me and I don't have to go and get them myself. So I really like the idea of this Instant Ink uh, subscription. And I've also put links to the items that I'm covering and the items that all of the presenters are covering in the chat. So you can take a look and um, take a look at them for yourself. There's also a refer a friend program and if you do buy a HP printer and you decide to um, subscribe to the Instant Ink program, uh, I put my Instant Ink Refer a Friend link. You would get a month free and I would get a month free. So if you want to use it, go right ahead. And that's the printer. The other item that I wanted to cover is called the Logitech Pebble. It is a Bluetooth mouse and it also has a USB receiver in it. Now I do a lot of beta testing on my iPad for different programs like the Adobe Illustrator programs, Adobe Photoshop, and some other programs. And with that, I need to use a mouse and an Apple Pencil. And I wanted to get a mouse and most of the time mouses are bulky and you don't necessarily know how uh, they're going to feel in your hand. You don't know how responsive they're going to be. But Logitech is usually really good at the devices that they create. And this particular mouse, it's very lightweight. It feels great on my hand. It's very responsive. It has three buttons and this mouse is almost silent. So here, here are the three buttons. You have a button here, here, and the scroll wheel is also a button. It's a very quiet mouse. Uh, I think I've had it for almost uh, a year now. I have not replaced the battery. And you'll look at the specs here and see that you know it's silent. It has a Bluetooth um, connection. It also has a, um, a nano receiver. I'll show you that in a second. It has a little magnetic plate that uh, peels off at the top and the receiver is there, the battery is there. And the great part about this mouse because it is Bluetooth and because it has a USB nano receiver, you can use it with say a tablet and your computer at the same time. All you have to do is flip it over and press this button. If this button is shining blue, it's connected to Bluetooth. So it would be connected to my tablet. When I press this button and I see the green light, it's then connected to my computer. So I, if I need to, I can switch back and forth and use it at any time and just have one mouse for both devices. This device is $29.99. It comes in four different colors, graphite, white, rose, and blue. And I really love it. It's one of the best mouse devices that I've ever had. And with that, my portion of the presentation is done. Mitch, you are up next. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead and share your Great. screen and take over. Whoops. Just click on, click on, click on Keynote. I did. There we go. Can you hide your other window? Okay, go, go ahead. I'm, I'm go ahead. going to go hide ahead. it go right ahead. now. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Okay, so, but I'm not on the right page. There we go. Okay, so uh, the first item that I have, whoops. The first item that I have, go back, is Alexis um, Mesh Router. 
And there are several mesh routers on the market. This happens to be the one that I use in my own home. I have two of them. They each will cover up to 3,000 square feet. Uh, they'll cover 50 devices. Uh, so uh, for somebody like Wayne, who has a lot of devices going into his um, okay. router system, this would be oh. ideal. But uh, Google makes one of these and Amazon and- Okay, uh, so it doesn't- What was that? Someone had unmuted their mic. Uh, Mike, go ahead, okay. Mitch. Okay, so uh, th this is an excellent choice. It's, w it's one of the more costly choices. Uh, I tend to buy these things at Costco because if anything goes wrong, they are ex have an excellent return policy. And I looked the other day and this was not available on Costco, but then yesterday it popped up and it was available. And they do have several other mesh systems uh, that they sell as well. The important thing, if you're gonna update your uh, your mesh route, your router system is to make sure that you get Wi-Fi 6. Um, and what Wi-Fi 6 is, it's sort of a different naming system. These things used to be called, um, for example, uh, the, the old one before this was 802.11ac. Uh, and that would have been Wi-Fi 5. And so they went to a completely different naming system. Uh, and the this is the latest standard, Wi-Fi 6. And it's extremely fast in your own home. So it will transmit things from your phone and from your iPad and your computer and your TV back and forth to all those devices much faster than the older standard. Um, so shop around for these. There are several out there. And also make sure you get a router that is uh, DOS is 3.1, uh, a, 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 a modem. If you do get a new modem, make sure you get the latest standard, which is 3.1. Um, and that's been out for a couple of years, but they're still stand, uh, selling the old 3.0s and they're, they are much slower. Okay, next. Look what I did, Sheeta. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> uh, okay. The next thing is cables, um, HDMI uh, cables, and the the newest standard is 2.1. The old standard was two, um, and the 2.1 came out a, a couple of years ago, and it's becoming very popular now. Now, you, you might, and and I like this particular one. Uh, that I did replace all of mine because they were all five or six years old and I just decided to go ahead and update to the latest standard, although some of my devices will not handle the increased uh, speed capacity, which I'm going to show in a minute. Um, but this particular one, as you can see, comes in several sizes. So you can figure out, I think I had one six foot and I bought uh, two three foot uh, from my TVs. Um, and so here's, it sounds like going from 2.0 to 2.1, what, what's the big deal? It's huge. And this shows that. So the first standard was 1.4 and it would run at 10.2 gigabytes per second. The one that's pretty popular still out there is the HDMI 2.0 at 18 gigabytes per second. You go to 2.1 and it'll do 48 gigabytes per second. And so it's a huge speed increase. Now, here's the catch 22. Your HDMI device that you're plugging into has to also be a uh, HDMI 2.1. So in my research, I looked at several TVs on the Costco site, bigger TVs. And if you look at the technical specs where it'll have, uh, it'll list all the HDMI ports, some TVs will have just HDMI 2.0 still. 
some will have most of the bigger TVs have four ports. And uh, so I found several TVs that one port would have 2.1 and the other three would have 2.0. And then I did find one or two TVs where all four points, uh, ports were the 2.1. Uh, but again, if you're going to replace cables, uh, if you do, if you, if you do use a 2.1 cable and you're plugging into a 2.0 device, it, it'll handle it fine. It's just not, you're just not going to get the increase in speed that you really want. Um, but, uh, this is a good upgrade. If you're thinking about cables, just make sure you get 2.1. If you're buying a new TV, check and see what kind of, HDMI ports they have and all the time in the technical specs they do not disclose that but I know they do at Costco okay now we get to the fun stuff uh, this is a salt and pepper uh, shaker that's electronic uh, and it's quite nice I ran into this when I rented a place to ski a couple years ago in Utah uh, this one uh, is, uh, I got at Costco, or I mean, I, I'm sorry, at uh, Amazon. I think it's maybe a dollar or so cheaper now. Um, these things run in price all over the board. You can get them for anywhere from, not this brand, I mean different brands, uh, for 20 to $25 all the way up. If you go to Williams Sonoma, you'll find them for 65 or $70. Uh, this one we've had for some time. I like it quite a bit. It's really sort of neat. If you get on the site, it'll show you this, but this is a blue light when you turn it upside down and it's automatically grinding, at, which sort of lights up your food. Does This particular brand does handle uh, quite a few batteries. I think they're the uh, AAA, the real small uh, batteries but you need six of them in each, in each uh, unit. Um, I just changed them out and we've had this for six or seven months. Uh, so they do last for quite a long time and we, we enjoy this quite a bit. And I think, uh, no, this isn't the one you, that you said you had, uh, Sheeta. Um, I think that's the next one. So shop around for these. This is the one I have. Like it quite a bit. Uh, but there are, and the link in the notes does link you to this one, but uh, there are others out there. Next, uh, I think this is the one that uh, Sheeta also has. This is a, um, a rechargeable uh, automatic soap dispenser. Now, we actually use ours with hand sanitizer um, just because that's what the boss wanted to put in it. Boss being my wife, of course. Uh, and we had one of these in the kitchen and she said, hey, get another one. So now we have one in the kitchen and one in our master bath. Uh, so you can put soap in these, you can put hand sanitizer. They work really well. You just put your hand underneath it and couple of squirts comes out. It sure shows that in this diagram right here. Um, they're quite expensive, but usually Bed Bath & Beyond, if you shop around, they get 20% coupons off uh, all over the internet. And I did see this on their site just yesterday when I went to look it up, that it was on sale for about $42. So you might be able to get that and then uh, I don't know if on sale items you get the 20% off uh, as well, but uh, that's a really good price. And this is a, we've had this for some time and we're very happy with it. I agree. I've had mine for a while and I absolutely love them. Yeah. How many do you have, Sheeta? I have, I have two, one in the kitchen, one in the bathroom. And you use yours for soap. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. All right. The last thing is an iPad case. This is the one that I use, uh, the Muse case. The Muse is probably one of the most popular cases for an iPad. Uh, it works really well uh, when you tilt your iPad up. And if you, 
there are several E's available. So you got to be careful. You put search for Muse uh, iPad case, and you got to put in specifically or search specifically for which model you have. So I have the 2018 iPad Pro um, 11 inch. And so this is, um, uh, this is the one that I got. And I actually got it in red. They come in all different colors. My wife's is blue and hers is the predecessor to the, to the uh, Pro. Um, so these are, uh, I know when we had the meetings at the library, I had a lot of people walk up to me and ask me about this case. And I know several people in our group bought it. And that concludes my guest presentation. All right, James Corsica, you're up next. You can go ahead and share your screen. Jim, we can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. Um, the three items that I have, each of them solved a problem that I had. I have two, get, two gadgets and uh, a piece of software. Excuse me, Jim. Do you and want to get in presentation mode? In a minute. Okay. 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 Um, two gadgets and a piece of software. Okay, the first item I have here is, here's the problem that it solved. When I FaceTime with people or, or when I use my uh, uh, laptop specifically, um, I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm backlit. And you will see when you look at the, in the gallery view of people who attend this meeting, some people have lights behind them and their face is darkened. Uh, this is a, a, a gooseneck lamp that actually plugs into your laptop. And what I like about it, uh, that's a fairly long, uh, fairly long gooseneck. It's probably about uh, 18 inches. Um, there it is, 15 inches. And you can see that there it has a, a, a clamp base. Now, that base is wide enough that the lamp can stand on its own, tenuously, but it can stand on its own. I have it clipped to a, a laptop computer stand, and the lighting that's on me right now is coming from that lamp. There is an, uh, it doesn't show it, okay. There is, uh, I don't see a picture that has that, anyway. There is an inline control that controls uh, turning it on and off. It controls the brightness of the lamp and it also controls the tone of the color. And you can see across the top here, there's a white light, a warm light and a combination of the two. And all three of those, you can control the intensity of the lamp or the intensity of the light. Okay, in the middle here, it shows that you can use it as an ordinary reading lamp. But I find that especially for Zoom meetings, and I conducted a family Zoom meeting just this past Sunday night and I used it, it's, uh, it's perfect for me. And uh, it's on sale at uh, Amazon for 20 bucks, uh, where you will see a lot of different lamps, some of them much larger, some of them uh, having different physical features, but I like this one because of the price and because of the fact that you can control the quality of the, of the light and the intensity of the light. Okay. Can you control it on your iPhone? What's that? Can you control the intensity and the uh, brightness and so forth on your iPhone? No, it's an inline, it's an inline switch that okay. plugs into your laptop. It, it's really meant to be used for a laptop. 
Okay. Okay. All of a sudden, it's not switching. Click your mouse on it and see if it'll let you go. Oh, okay. My next item is an iPad um, iPhone holder. Um, if you've ever uh, conducted any FaceTime, uh, had meetings with family, I have two daughters that are far apart from me. One's in Seattle, one's in in Chicago, um, frequently people will use their iPhone or their iPad in their lap and you get this view of them from, from an, uh, what's called a low angle in, in film and which gives you a wonderful view of their nostrils and, uh, <laughs> and their double, sometimes in the case of me, triple chins. Well, um, as you can see by the wonderful image that Mitch had, he's got a high angle on his camera. Okay, this stand enables you to use either your iPhone or your iPad on the stand. And the stand extends to almost... Uh, got to move my 18 inches, as you can see there to the right. And various... In various uh, heights in between, the shortest being about uh, a foot. Now, uh, in, the, in, in the spirit of full disclosure, I will use this in my bathroom while I'm shaving, okay? And I'll bring my iPad on this stand and watch a late night TV program that I have recorded uh, in the mornings when I get cleaned up. Uh, the beauty of this stand is it's very, very sturdy. Uh, even though the iPad is a, is a relatively large device, the base is sturdy enough that you really don't have to worry about it tipping over un unless you intentionally hit it or accidentally hit it by, uh, for some reason. Uh, I checked the price recently and it's up a few bucks at Amazon beyond $31. And as stands go, it's probably on the expensive side, but I have to say that it's very, very hardy. And when it's extended, if you're sitting on the couch, when it's extended and sitting on your coffee table, it gives you that nice front angle or slightly high angle that uh, does not make your nostrils the centerpiece of the visual image. Okay. Okay. Jim, I have one question on that. Uh, you showed that as vertical. Can you do it as horizontal? Is it the, can Absolutely. you mount it any way you want? Okay. Absolutely. In fact, most of the time when I use it, I use it in landscape mode, not horizontal. I, okay. I, I should have mentioned that. Um, that that uh, clamp there rotates a full 360 degrees. And also, uh, I don't know, I think the astronauts would say it would give you a pitch and a yaw. You can, you can angle it front to back and you can rotate it 360 degrees uh, to suit whatever position you want it to be in. Um, the other thing that might occur to some of you is, uh, can you mount an iPad in its case on this? As I look at the clamp, it looks to be about a half an inch, maybe five eighths of an inch deep. So I think it would depend upon the case that, uh, for the iPad that you have. I tend to take my iPad out of the case and use it on the stand. Okay? Okay. All right. The last uh, item that I want to talk about is you've actually, uh, if you've attended meetings, you've actually seen some of us use this off and on. It's called the Reflector 3 software. And I, I use it in kind of a unique way. And um, I'm a retired advanced math teacher. Uh, I retired over 10 years ago, but I have continued to tutor since then. And I thought you might be interested in seeing 
how I use this software. It's a very reasonably priced piece of software. It's $18. And what it enables you to do, as you can see on the screen there, is it enables you to mirror your iPhone and your iPad onto your laptop computer. Most of you are familiar with the idea of mirroring your iPhone or your iPad to your Apple TV. Well, this is a, a different uh, sort of thing. And the way I use it is this way. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. Very good. All right, what I'm going to do is, here's the Reflector 3 software. Am I still sharing, by the way? Yes, you are, Jeff. Okay, here's the Reflector 3 software. What you do is you start mirroring on your device, your handheld device. And one of the choices is my MacBook Pro. And you can see up comes a code number that you have to add. And for some reason, it's not coming up. <laughs> I just used this yesterday. Okay. And are, they both on, are they both on the same network, Jim? That's what I just checked. Uh, let, let me double check my iPad and make sure it's on the same network. Right. Yes, it is. And you're also okay. mirroring. It doesn't you're, allow you. You're, What's that? Zoom may no, not allow you. It, it, it does. We've used it many times. No, I've, you, I've, used, yeah. I've used it. Are you mirroring it to your desktop, the Zoom app? I'm, I'm sorry, not the Zoom yeah. app, um, Reflector. Yes. Okay, I see it trying. Yeah, I see it trying. How are you seeing it trying? I mean, I, I see I, the I I see the reflector app coming up. I. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do one more thing. Try the window menu. What's that? Click on the window menu and see if anything appears under that, perhaps, in Reflector 3 at the top. I entered the code number. Right. Um, what about bring all to front? I'll tell you what, I'm gonna quit the reflector and start it again. Okay. Ah, success. There, he is. there you go. Okay. Now, I am using, I'm going to be using the uh, notes app, which I am opening 
with my Apple Pencil. So the beauty of this software is it enables me to use the Notes app in my Apple Pencil and that when I'm working with a student remotely, that student is, is like looking over the shoulder at, at my notepad so that if there is something that I'm working on, they're seeing that completely directly. And it occurred to me, and then after I'm, after I'm done working with the student, all of the, every time I come up with a new sheet of paper, quote unquote, in notes, it of course keeps track of them so that after the session, I can go back and get the notes that I had. There's one from yesterday. And I can just send it to the student under send a copy. And then usually the name of the student comes up there and I just tap it and it goes off in a message and the student doesn't have to keep notes. It's all there right in front of him or her. And this solved quite a problem for me because currently, of course, because of COVID, I'm usually working with people who are under 18 years, 18 years old or under. I'm, I'm working with some co college students. And of course, uh, being in an age group that is uh, say sh sensitive to the COVID issues, uh, I can't do in-person in tutoring anymore. Plus, it enables me to work with students all over the place. Uh, I have one student now in California and I, I have worked with a student in London and in Dublin. And the Reflector app at 18 bucks just makes it all possible. Uh, it occurred to me that our members might use it to work with grandchildren. Uh, many of our members have a technical background and might be able to do this kind of thing with their grandchildren or even their children to help them out. Um, and uh, I, I, I've spent the 18 bucks and it's paid for itself many, many, many times over. It's a great piece of software. I'm sorry about the holdup, uh, but oh. uh, thank you for any questions you might have. Yeah, uh, Jim, this, is, this is Frank, I have a question. I actually tried the uh, free version of Reflector 3, which you can do for seven days. And when, uh -huh. when I was recording on my iPhone in the landscape mode, it was displaying on my computer in a portrait, vertical, but sideways. Do you know why? It was vertical, but sideways. Was it a video you were playing? Yes. That's probably why. It, sometimes when I play a video on my phone, if I turn the phone sideways, it does not go into landscape mode. I, I can't explain why it does it sometimes and why it doesn't sometimes, but... Um, uh, for example, um, I, I use a, uh, the Internet Movie Database quite a bit. When I turn that sideways, sometimes I get a landscape version of the video. Sometimes I don't. Interesting. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Is it Any in the app store? What's that? Is, uh, is Reflector 3 in the app store or do you go to a site? Uh, I went to a site, and that site is in the links that Sheeta published in the chat. All three links are there, and uh, the, the site, I believe, is airsquirrels.com. Thank you. And, uh, and it has a couple of other pieces of software that they're selling, too, but Reflector 3 was the one that did it for me. Uh, I have a question, okay. James. James, I have a question. Sure. Uh, what would be the advantage of using this over using the Zoom app and using the uh, whiteboard to share interactively with the student? Because I've done that before. Okay, the advantage is I know about this. I don't know about the whiteboard. <laughs> okay. 
And, and, and I'm not saying and I'm not saying that there's not some third party apps that wouldn't make better sketch pads than notes. It's just that notes is a native uh, native app to the Mac environment. And they seem to be improving it with every new version of, of an operating system. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Right. Jim, while we have you here, we have a question. Can the book clamp light work with an iPad? Uh, Maureen, can you unmute yourself and uh, expound on your question? Well, he said specifically that it's designed to work with a laptop. So I don't have a laptop. All I have is an iPad, but I'm interested in the device. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I do know that the, that the, the end of the cord is a USB connection. So if you had a USB to, did you say an iPad? Yes. Okay, if you had a USB to lightning connection, you could certainly plug it into the iPad. Whether that does anything, I don't know. My guess is that the power on the laptop is more than enough for the lamp. I'm not sure the power of an iPad would be more enough, more than enough for the lamp. Thank you. So my answer is I haven't tried it, um, but physically you can connect it. Whether it will work or not, I don't know. All right. Thank Hi, you. Jim. Go ahead. Jim, I wanted to mention on the light, uh, that's an excellent choice that you displayed. I have a little bit different one that, uh, and I have a 27 inch uh, Mac. I also have an iPad, uh, but it sits on my desk and it, does have several, it has the same kind of adjustments that yours has. In other words, I can adjust it, the light up and down 10 or 15 different uh, ways. And, I, and also whether it's a dim, uh, a, a, a bright light or a, a, a dimmer light. So my point is, is that if that won't work for her on an iPad and she has a desk or something else that there are a lot of these lights on Amazon to choose from. Well, yes, you're, cool. you're right, okay. and, and, and those lights may have their own self-contained battery uh, compartment. Mine so plugs you would, into the wall. Okay, uh, I, would like, I would like that we uh, stop asking questions right now and let uh, Jeff continue. We will hopefully have plenty of time to ask questions after Jeff completes his portion. Thank you so much. Take it away, Jeff. Okay. So I'm going to talk about three products today, one of which uh, I own and the other two I've helped set up, but I don't actually own them. So the first one is the Sonos Move. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Sonos, which is a home speaker system, which is wireless uh, as far as the uh, audio signal goes. They do need to be plugged into an electrical outlet for power and they, will connect uh, to your Wi-Fi network and let you listen to music in any room in your house and they're portable so you can move them around and plug them into another, another space. Uh, the new Sonos Move is the first Sonos that has an internal battery. So that means that it doesn't need to be connected to a wall or an outlet. And it uses both the standard Wi-Fi that your regular Sonos uses as well as Bluetooth which means that you could technically take it to the beach and connect your phone or iPad using Bluetooth to transmit the music to the Sono speaker. The battery does last about 10 hours and it's a pretty bulky device. Um, it's available in black or white. And it is, uh, I'll show you in a moment. So there's another picture. So it does have uh, the Bluetooth, which the regular Sonos just uses Wi-Fi only. So that's a new feature that allows it to be more portable and it can also connect to your existing Sono system. So you can listen to music throughout the house and then outside to the lanai uh, with the portable system. And it also has a microphone that's listening, uh, unfortunately not for Siri yet, but for Amazon Alexa or the Google Assistant. So if you have one of the Google devices or an Amazon device, 
you can give uh, controls uh, and get responses or control smart appliances like light bulbs and such with the Sonos with that feature. So that is the Sonos compared to an uh, Apple HomePod and one of the little portable UE Boom 2s and the Sonos 1. So you can see it's a lot larger and bulkier than the regular Sonos. It weighs about six and a half pounds, a little more than six and a half pounds. That's someone holding it so you can get a size. So again, there, it's a good speaker and there is a little handle on the back of it that will let you grip it. Uh, kind of a little concave indentation that you can hook your finger up under uh, grab to make it a little easier to carry around. But it is $400, but it is a, it sounds great. And I've set two of these up for, for clients and they were very happy with them. And the fact that you can take it anywhere you go is a feature that Sonos didn't allow before. So it's a little more robust sound than some of the other portable speakers. Uh, although it, it, it seems like it will get to about the same, uh, the HomePod and the Sonos Move seem to have about the same volume maximums because the HomePod can get pretty loud if you want it to. And I think the Sonos has about the same volume, but it's in a bigger package than the HomePod, as you see here. But it is portable, which uh, none of uh, the other uh, bigger speakers are. So that's a nice feature. Does Wi-Fi or Bluetooth affect the quality one way or the other of the music? No, the difference, the main difference is that with Wi-Fi, um, you know, you have a longer range, but the audio quality, uh, there should be no discrepancy, but Bluetooth has about uh, a 30 to 45 foot range before the signal decreases a little bit. But if you're within, you know, 20 feet of the speaker, you could have no degradation of sound with Bluetooth. So it's a, it's a very stable system and it uses Bluetooth 3, which is, uh, or maybe Bluetooth 5. It has the most recent Bluetooth specs so that it is the the longest range and the clearest sound for Bluetooth. So the next item that I actually do own and, and can talk a little bit more about is the new iPhone 12. So uh, by now, all the iPhone 12 models are for sale and being delivered. Uh, the iPhone 12 came out a couple of weeks ago and then the, I12, the iPhone 12 mini and the iPhone 12 Pro Max were available last Friday. So that, of course, is this year's iteration of the iPhone, which is newer and faster and has a better camera than last year's. The big thing about this phone is it has the 5G capability built in. So that all depends on availability. And because 5G is not a nationwide standard yet and may not be for a few more years, that may or may not come into play here in Naples for several years because uh, the infrastructure has just not... Uh, been added yet to, to support the 5G network. I know that uh, Dallas has some spots with 5G, New York City, Chicago, but until the big metro areas get it and then they start putting the hardware in, in the rest of the country, 5G really won't be a practical uh, feature, I think, but this phone will be able to take care of it. Uh, but probably now the only time you'll be able to use it if, is if you're traveling. And again, the maximum size stayed at 512 gigabytes, and it's got a new uh, processor. This year is the A14. So one new feature of the iPhone uh, 12 line is the return of the MagSafe designation. So if you remember, uh, the Mac laptops for USB-C used to have what was called a MagSafe charger, where if your dog ran by and knocked the cord out of the laptop, it wouldn't pull the laptop off the table. So it was a magnetic charger that just kind of clicked in and out of the charging port. And then now with the USB-C ports, the, the, the cord could technically pull the laptop off the table at the right angle. So the MagSafe was a nice feature that they did away with, probably because of uh, space and volume inside the computer. But the new iPad or the new iPhone uh, 12 line has a, a circular magnet inside the phone, in the back of the phone, that supports the wireless charging, which is double the old charging standards. It's a 15 watt instead of a 7.5 watt. And it also allows you to, the center picture there is what they call the MagSafe charger. 
So if you have the iPhone 12 and you have the $40 MagSafe charger, which Apple sells, the charger will kind of cl click to the phone, to the back of the phone with a very nice little solid click sound. And that's how you can charge your phone, but it still has lightning port. So you can charge it with any of the existing chargers that you've had before. Another thing different about the iPhone 12 line, they're not shipping with a charging brick. So the little plug that they used to give you, uh, you know, that you would plug into the outlet and plug your cable to, has now changed to a USB-C cord on one end and the other end is still lightning. So if you don't have a USB-C charging port or charger block, you'll have to buy one of those and you can get them on Amazon for usually two for $10 uh, by Anchor or uh, another vendor. So if you, if you happen to get an iPhone 12, and you don't have the right charging port because it doesn't uh, use the standard USB charging ports that you might have from past devices. Uh, and also the magnetic charging. So the, with MagSafe, it also gives the ability, all of Apple's cases support the MagSafe. So they've got a little conductive ring in there that will connect to the chargers. And you can also get these little accessories now, like a little wallet which will three, three or four credit cards and maybe some cash. And those is magnetically attached to the back. So that's what they look like when they're attached. And they can attach either to the phone or they can attach to the case, as you see there on the right, the dark blue case there with the tan wallet. So the magnet uh, is embedded in the phone. It's embedded in the cases. And there's a magnet in the accessories so that those wallets will just click on and they stay on pretty well, but I haven't received mine yet. But one review I read was that if you're keeping the phone in your pocket, you have to be cautious when pulling it in and out because the wallet, the magnet isn't strong enough to keep that wallet attached to the phone if your pocket is tight. Or maybe if you have a, a purse that has a lot of stuff in it. So be cautious that until I see one of these in person, but that's the one thing I read about it was that the, the wallet can tend to slide off the phone if you're pulling it out of your pocket. So you wouldn't want it to slide off and fall out if you've got cards in there. So that's something that we'll, we'll see more of as these become more available. So the specs of the iPhone, the iPhone 12 mini is the smallest iPhone I think they've ever made actually. It's, uh, it's smaller than the iPhone, the regular iPhone uh, 12. It's, it's about the same size as like, if you remember the iPhone five, but those are the specs on it. It only, it weighs under five ounces. And uh, so it's just over two and a half inches wide, over five inches tall and uh, 7.4 millimeters. Thick. So all the phones are 7.4 millimeters thick, but the iPhone 12 mini is the phone that a lot of people liked because of the size, especially I didn't know until they came out with the large phones a few years ago that a lot of women's pants and accessories didn't have pockets or they had very small pockets and the bigger phones would not fit into them. So the iPhone 12 mini should solve that for a lot of people that have smaller pockets or, or minimal pockets that they can use easier to carry and easier to, uh, to manage. Uh, and, it, and it fits in your hand and it's got the same guts as the iPhone 12. So it has the same camera, the same processor, it's just a smaller package. Now the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max are the larger phones. So the iPhone 12 Pro is the same size generally as the iPhone 11 and iPhone 10 models. However, they've redesigned it to have more uh, squared edges. So if you remember some of the phones recently have had kind of rounded edges, these edges are actually more squared like the iPhone 5 used to be if you remember that. So they're all 7.4 millimeters thick. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is the biggest screen they've ever had on an iPhone. And it is uh, almost six and a half inches tall, over three inches wide, and it weighs half a pound. So it weighs eight ounces, which is pretty heavy for a phone. And I just got mine last week and it was a couple of days for me to get used to it. Now I really like it, but it was noticeably heavier. It fell out of my pocket once because it's a little bigger. So, uh, but it is easier on the eyes that I've noticed is uh, better for me as I get a little older. So those are the sizes and that, that Pro Max is a new size that they've never uh, 
had before. So it's a 6.7 inch screen diagonally. All right, Jeff, you have five minutes. Okay. Yeah, and the last item, this is a really neat item uh, that I have uh, installed a few of, but I don't actually own one yet. But everybody's probably had or tried one of those smart picture frames that you would put on your desk or your nightstand that you can add photos to. And this is kind of the evolution of that. So these are really large. They're either 16 by 24 or 19 by 29 inches. And they're made by Netgear, which is the same company that makes the wireless routers that you might've used in the past and such. But they have different frame colors and you can go onto the website and it can show you pre-programmed art. It can show you your own photos. You can make it horizontal. You can make it landscape. It has great resolution. Uh, it has an anti-glare coating, just like a, a framed photo might. And it can display 16.7 uh, million colors with their advanced hyperviewing angle LCD. So when you're coming down the stairs and looking at this, it's not distorted like you might think a TV would be. It's pretty crystal clear from any viewing angle. And it is almost $500. I'm, but it's the, the Picasso of the smart frames. You can tap the picture, tap the screen, and see information about photos that you've gotten from the mural service. So if you, if you saw this photo, you could actually, with the pre-programmed artwork that comes with it, one of which is Van Gogh's Starry Night, you could tap the screen and it would show you a little bio and some information about the painting. So if you upload your own photos, that obviously won't happen, which you can do from your phone or from your computer or from your iPad. You can easily uh, get the app and then uh, just send photos to it wirelessly, or it has an SD card reader that you can load up on your computer and plug in. And even uh, GIFs, so animated photos will display on this, which is kind of neat. And you'll notice that some of these pictures, there is a cable this has to be plugged into the power. And these photos that you see here, they, they put in the cable behind the wall, which is nice and clean. But normally uh, you'd have a cable hanging that you might wanna cover. And this one doesn't show it, but that's the picture in the middle. And you can customize it. You can, there's a option, uh, Samsung makes a TV called the frame, but it's a lot, lot bigger and a lot more expensive than this. And that's it for that. Okay. okay, thank you, Jeff. If you have questions, can you please raise your hand and we can call on you in the uh, participants. Uh, Thomas Hopkins, can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Uh, yes, Jeff, uh, on this uh, magnetic charging stuff, uh, can you charge things on metal services? It was, uh, we have several iPads and iPhones and Apple Watches and things, and I got a metal uh, magazine rack that was just ideal vertical for size. But every time we put any one of the things near to it, you know, the magnet tends to click, so we've stopped using it. I'm just wondering, technically, you have to stay away from metal surfaces when you're using those chargers. Probably so, uh, because the, 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 the magnets involved any regular metal surfaces would probably be not ideal for charging. Even though this has the MagSafe charging the new phone, it will charge on any existing, the, the QI key wireless chargers that you had, had in the past for your other wireless iPhones. It will charge with those, but it only charges at seven and a half watts maximum. So the benefit of the MagSafe charger is that it, it can use the full 15 watts of wireless charging. But I think on any, on any metal surfaces, none of these magnetic surfaces, none of these uh, magnets would be ideal for that. Okay, thank yeah, you. I have a question for Mitch. Go ahead, Robert. Mitch, uh, Mitch what's the uh, brand of the light that you mentioned in the quote? Mitch, can you put that in for Mitch? You are muted. Can you put that information in the chat, Mitch? Mitch, are you there? 
Okay, we'll get that information for you, Robert. <clears throat> okay, uh, Alan Weinstein, unmute yourself and ask your question, please. About the light that attaches to uh, your computer, I have a light that I attach to my screen on my iMac, and in order for it to light me up, the light shines brightly right in my eye and is very disconcerting. Is the light that you're talking about also, will that be a problem to illuminate my face? Will it shine in my eye? Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine, Jim. Oh, okay. I, I don't find the light so bright that it, that it bothers me. Right now, the light is on my face. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to change it to the greatest intensity. Okay, that's at the greatest intensity right now. You can tell that it's washing out my face. That's a little too bright for me. Okay, so if I lower it a little bit, okay, I think that that illuminates my face quite well. And it the light doesn't bother me, but you're correct, Alan. It's it's going to aim right at your face. It's going to be out of your direct line of vi line of vision, but it's it's going to be in your general field of vision. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. okay. Do we have any more questions? I have a question, but I couldn't see how to raise my hand. <laughs> you can if you're a co-host. Go ahead and ask your question. Oh, oh, okay. There's a lot of information in the chat sheet. Uh, how do I, I just tried copying it? Uh, is there a way to copy all of that information? If you look at the chat, there should be down at the lower right hand corner. You see the three dots. There are three yes. dots. If you click on those three dots, it will bring up a pop up menu where you can save the chat. And Excellent. after and after the Zoom meeting ends. Your computer will save the chat and bring up a finder window and show you uh, the chat file. And all of the information will be in it. Thank you, that's great. Okay. I, will, uh, I will make sure that when I send out the video that I send uh, the chat with it also. Okay, okay. Mitch, are, Mitch, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm putting, I just got a link to that light from uh, Amazon and I'm getting ready to paste it in the, uh, in the uh, chat. Uh, chat. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And as Jim stated, we have uh, the titles and the links to all of the information that we covered today in the chat file in the chat pod. So you can take a look at that and George will uh, send that information out. And I think, uh, how often do you have to charge the soap dispenser? That's a question from Jim Flattery. Uh, I usually have to charge mine every maybe three, four months. It comes with a charger device and you have to be careful that you place the, the little charger puck in the right position, otherwise it won't charge. But it keeps a good, strong charge and it also has um, a light on it. And the light will turn red to let you know that it's either low or it needs to be charged. And when the dispenser works, it has a blue light. What uh, they don't tell you when you buy this thing is how to turn the dispenser off. So if you hold and press the power button for a couple of seconds, then the light will glow red and then it will turn off, meaning that the dispenser is off and then you can refill it or what you can even wash it down, run it with, uh, run it over with water is it, it's really cool. And then you press the power light for a few seconds after you're done and the light will turn blue to let you know that it's turned on. All right, any other questions? I have a question for Jeff on the, on the big picture displayer. Uh, the one slide you showed uh, indicated that that must probably have to be plugged into an outlet. Is that correct? Right. You it has that. to have power 
although you can you can hide it behind the wall if, if you've got it you know if you cut it out but it does it does have a power cord hanging from it when you take it out of the box and whether you hide that or not would be a little construction project that you could do but some of the pictures that i found showed it where it was hidden but it it does actually have to have be plugged into a power source which may or may not be hidden depending on your your location and such okay thank you all right, thank you. Uh, it is 1246. George, do you have any closing comments? 